Good morning. How are you guys doing today? Yeah. So first of all, thank you to the organizer of Fast Forward. Really happy to be uh, to be with you this morning. Uh, my name is Emilia Moyon. I work for Berkeley College of Music on the campus of Valencia, Spain. And I'm here this morning to talk to you about a question that I've been obsessed with for the last few years, which is how do I help my students getting a job in the music industry? And how do I help them developing a successful career? You've heard yesterday, the music industry is surrounded by a lot of questions. We still don't know how the industry is going to look like in a few years from now. So based on that situation, how do you start a career in that industry? Um, the philosophy we have in our program, in our Master in Music Business, is the best strategy to adopt is probably to have an entrepreneurial mindset. And that's what I want to talk to you about today. We've talked about a lot of things that have changed in the music industry, and a lot of things did. But a lot of things haven't changed as well. For example, a lot of markets still rely essentially on physical sales. We were told after Napster that the labels, essentially the major labels, were going to disappear and die. They're still there, and they still represent a big part of the business in the music industry. We were told that digital technology were going to be an amazing tool to empower artists, so they can take control of their career. Look today, many artists still struggle to use those tools. We talked about that in marketing yesterday. Uh, we were told as well that internet was a great opportunity to democratize the music industry. The biggest topic of discussion this year is we need more transparency in the music industry. So all of that hasn't changed for many, many, many years. So in order for, to understand what is a successful career in the music industry, I spent some time in my research looking at successful people back in the days in the traditional music industry and today I tried to make some kind of comparison. Is there any kind of difference in the trajectory that they follow professionally? I looked at a lot of different people. I have only 10 minutes right now, I only have time to talk to you about two. Two examples that for me are pretty representative of the difference in careers in music. Uh, do you guys know the guy on the left, on your left? Have you, have you seen this guy? His name is Pascal Negre. He's, uh, he's a pure major executive. He started his career in the music industry in the mid-80s, starting as a press assistant, became a promotion manager, led one of the labels of Universal Music and made his way to the top to become the, the CEO of Universal Music Group, and still is. So very interesting career. He made his way from the bottom to the top in the same ecosystem, major labels. Now the guy on the right, maybe you know him. Anybody? Yeah, Ian Rogers. Uh, very, very interesting profile. He started, you, you may or may not know, as a webmaster for the Beastie Boys. Then he started to work for a bunch of startup tech companies, many different areas. He created his very own top spin. Some of you may be aware of this company. He worked for Yahoo. Recently, he was a CEO uh, for Beats Music. And he recently got appointed a head of digital strategy for uh, LVMH in Paris, a group that has, doesn't have anything to do with music, but it's pretty much focusing on fashion. So the difference between these two guys, who both had a very successful career, is that the first one stayed in the same perimeter, same environment, and made his way to the top. The second one, which is much more uh, typical of today's success stories, somebody who has strong skills and was able to travel from one industry to another and use the same set of skills and does not rely on one industry. So there are a few things we can learn about that, and I would like to share with you five pieces of advice that hopefully will be useful for you. Um, did anybody in this room, was anybody in this room ever told that you should follow your passion? Yeah, raise your hands if you were. Okay, pretty much everybody. Personally, I think it's a shitty piece of advice. And the first thing I tell my students, and I'm trying to be a little bit provocative there, is not to follow your passion. I don't necessarily tell them the same way. I tell them passion is not enough. And when you tell somebody, follow your passion, that push people to, do, to go in any direction with that. Uh, as many of you, I'm passionate with music. 
I love music. I love to sing under the shower in the morning. Does that mean that I should be a professional singer? No. Because we have a big problem here. I, I suck. I'm not good at singing. I'm the only one who enjoys my singing. Even my wife hates it. So, if you're passionate with something, you need to make sure that you also have a skill set that goes with it. Having the passion and the skills, is it enough to create a career on that? Let's say that I'm a big fan of Justin Bieber. I can have the skills related to that. I can know everything about Justin Bieber. I can collect all his music. I can know every single fact about the singer. That's a skill I develop. What does that make me? A great fan. I'm a great fan. Is anybody willing to pay for that? Is anybody going to give me money because I'm a great Justin Bieber fan? No. So having the passion and the skills, still not enough. That's a hobby. If you look at it from a different angle, let's say that you have the skills and you have another thing that is very important, you fit with the reality of the market, meaning that somebody is willing to pay for your skills. A lot of people do that. Let's say I'm a, an accountant. I do accounting really, really well. Are there anybody willing to pay for that? Yeah, there's plenty of job accounting. And am I passionate about that? Maybe not. And a lot of people in Europe, anywhere, are what we call a job. They have some skills that match a market reality, but it's totally disconnected to their passion. And that's why on the weekend, they play with their bands in their garage, you know, to have a little bit of that passion. So, what I'm trying to tell you is that the sweet spot is when you are able to develop your career based on the intersection between your passion, your skills, and the reality of the market. And for me, it's a really good template to analyze what you can do in the music industry. And if you manage to do that, that's how I believe you develop a successful career. So the first tip that you can learn from an entrepreneurship mindset is to build a career based on this intersection. Something you often hear as well is, look at this guy, he made it in the music business, he, he got so lucky. I don't believe in luck. I think luck is when preparation meets opportunity. And people who say, oh, I just didn't make it because I was not lucky are actually people who were either not prepared or didn't create opportunity. Uh, what is preparation? If you guys want to work in the music industry, preparation is to know everything that's happening in the music industry. Getting the right information. Knowing what's happening. Not kind of what happened 10 years ago, what happened last night in the music industry. Um, personally, I spend more than an hour every day reading about this industry because that's what gives you an edge whenever you do something, whenever you're in a conversation. Now, what is, how do you create opportunities? If you are sitting in this room and you came to that conference, you probably know what it is. Coming to that place is the right, right thing to do. Uh, that's why in our program, for example, in our master program, we received last year more than 45 guest speakers. Because we know that that kind of interaction the students have with these people is creating opportunities. Another great way to create opportunities is to use a magic word, especially at the beginning of your career. This magic word, you all know it, it's simply yes. When you start a career saying yes, even if you're being offered a job or something to do that you think you're better, you could do better, at the beginning, saying yes creates opportunity. It's a powerful one. Um, entrepreneurs take risks. I don't know if any of you have ever been to a school reunion, you know, when you, you meet your classmates 10 years later to talk about what they became. I've done a couple of those, and what's amazing, what I learned from that, is my classmates who are trying to play it safe, have a safe job, without any risk, are usually the ones that are the least happy. They're usually the ones who want to change career totally and want to become yoga teachers. I know you all have an example. Uh, I think taking risk at the beginning, investing in your education or to creating a business, that's how you develop some very specific, a very specific skill set that will help you build a long, successful career. Uh, don't focus on music. I know we're all here to talk about music. You saw the example of Ian Rogers. Today, the boundaries between entertainment 
media, technology, startups are very blurry. You, and if you, the more you're likely to understand how those different ecosystems interact with each other, the more value you're going to have on the job market. So it's good to know about music, I told you about that, but it's also very important to keep uh, open understanding. Um, entrepreneurs, I told you, they take risk at the early stage, but they also avoid taking unnecessary risk by developing transferable skills. Those skills that you will be able to use if you work in the music industry, but if you want to go elsewhere and work in different uh, industries, you'll be able to, to value as well. And finally, success, and that's something you don't hear when, when you have successful people who tell you about their career, something they often forget to mention is that success requires hard work. And that's something you need to be ready for as well. And that's something that hasn't changed. Traditional music industry or now, those two guys, if they made it, it's because they worked really hard in the first place. So, those five pieces of advice kind of summarize uh, the philosophy we have in this program to, to, to help our students developing their career. Uh, there's a concept that I really like, which is the startup of you, where we ask our students to, uh, to think as entrepreneurs, but not to develop a company, but to develop their own career, develop a skill set that they will be able to help them not finding one job, because it's not our goal. Our goal is to help them developing a long-term career. And I believe this is much more, uh, uh, much more source of satisfaction. So thank you for your attention. If you want any more information about, before we open for our questions, if you want any information about our program, there's a link on this slide. You can just type it on your phone or your computer to receive some information about the program. And we have one of our students right here with a TEDx Berkeley t-shirt who can also give you some, uh, some flyers to fill to get some information. And feel free to interact with us if you have any questions. But now let's open it for question and answers. So the question was, as a musician, do you need to take care of that part of the business or you need to focus on your, uh, on your craft pretty much? That's a really good question. Uh, I think you know, there's a point in your career as an artist where you can't afford to pay the right people to do that. And that's why I think it's important to be able to develop both sides of the brain. Not meaning that you're going to become a business person and see your fans as clients, because if you do that, I think you're screwed. You need to still think about yourself as an artist and think about your uh, fans as fans. But you also need to have a kind of entrepreneurial approach to, to understand that your fans have a certain experience when they listen to your music and put yourself in their shoes, you know, trying to say, what are they looking for? How do they feel when they listen to my music? And I think it's a very entrepreneurial approach to do that, to try to shift between your point of view to the point of view to the, of the artist. Uh, after, when, when an artist reaches a different level of his career and become more professional and has a much larger uh, a fan base, that's where they need somebody to take care of the business. And, 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 uh, and uh, after a certain level, you cannot take care of everything. So it kind of depends at which, which level you're at right now. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.